Hey everyone! Today I'm going to be talking about the tracking system for the Weather Balloon Project. First I'm going to give you an overview of what's, what's included here with the tracking system. We have a radio transmitter here that transmits at a fixed frequency of 144.390 megahertz. We have a GPS module right here. We'll be talking about that in detail in just a moment. And then it has an SMA connector right over here for where the antenna hooks on. The GPS antenna will connect right here. And you can see that it's all mounted on top of an Adreno Uno. So I want to talk a bit about the PCB design process. Every project starts on a breadboard, but breadboards aren't sustainable if you want to actually do something with it. So here is an extra that I have for the PCB that I made for the tracking system. We're going to head over to the computer and I will show you how I made this and I'll get into more detail on each of the individual components here. So there are a lot of different radio transmitter tracking systems available on the market. I wanted something that was cheap and something that would work. All of the different versions that I found ranged from $200 all the way up to $600, I think, for one of the other ones. This is the one that I was leaning towards. This is Trequino. This is what mine is based off of. But this actually has more features than what I originally wanted it to use. Building this probably would have cost somewhere between $250 and $300. It has a ton of parts. Most of these are unnecessary. I don't need them. I don't need to do the majority of things that Trequino does. So while setting out to build my own tracking system, I was researching the Radiometrics HX1. This is the transmitter that I am using on my tracking system. Uh, SparkFun sells them for about 50 bucks. They have a ton of details here about the APRS system, how it works, and how to use the radio transmitter. So let's talk about that for a minute here. The transmitter has seven pins. We have our data pin over here on number seven, the device power and ground here on five and six, and pin number four is the enable pin. And then pins one, two, and three are used for the antenna. RF ground is on 1 and 3, and pin 2 is for the antenna feed. Now I do want to point out that anytime you are testing something like this, always make sure you have an antenna attached, otherwise you could fry the unit. It does require a full 5 volts and is uh, capable of transmitting at 300 milliwatts. They talk about an antenna design here. Um, this is a quarter wave ground plane antenna. That's not going to work for the balloon project, but from what I've seen, um, the type of antenna that you use with a balloon doesn't really matter since it's going to be so high up in the air, it's not going to have any obstructions. So this also gets into how to assemble it. This is SparkFun's version of Trequino. Now, I'm not using temperature sensors with it, so we can cross those out. I'm not going to be using a buzzer. I'm not going to be using the voltage divider. I don't need to measure the, the voltage that's coming in here. That's all that's used for is for measuring the supply voltage. So we've got the GPS receiver, the transmitter, and the antenna. That's all I need. So let's take a look at the GPS here. Also from SparkFun, this is probably the only GPS unit on the market, at least that I could find, that would be guaranteed to work with this type of a project. If we take a look at the data sheet, it's loaded with features. And if we look at the specifications here under operational limits, it shows less than 18,000 meters and less than 515 meters per second. However, there's a little mark right there. If we scroll down to see what that means, it says that either limit may be exceeded, but not both. 
This is because the government doesn't want people building their own guided missiles. It's a good thing to have, but if either can be exceeded, just not both at the same time, that's perfect for what we're going to be using this for. Now let's talk a little bit here about the design process. This is uh, EagleCAD. Um, this is a free program from Autodesk. It's 100% free and you can make two layer PCBs. So here is the schematic for the tracking system. It's pretty simple. We've got the connectors over here for the GPS. Uh, JP3 over here is something I put in there since the trackings or the the GPS unit has two data outputs. One data outputs going to the Adreno so that it can be transmitted, but the other set of pins here on JP3 I've designed so that I could hook it up to a USB and use that to program the GPS module itself. We've got the Adreno layout here in the middle. We've got the antenna hooked up over here. This is very easy software to use. There's some free ones online too. This has the most features. It's very easy to use. You can also import your own part libraries right here. Um, you can see all the libraries that I have installed. I just went ahead and installed everything I could find because I didn't know where anything was. Place your parts, draw your lines, and then you will click this button up here to switch to the board view. Now I've already completed all of this, but when you initially make this, all of your parts are going to be in the corner. You have to drag them into position. The specific Adreno right here that I used already includes an outline for a shield. So it was very convenient. I already had all the dimensions and everything that I needed right here. So you put everything in place and then you click this button right over here to draw your traces. Make sure that nothing overlaps. Now the red ones are on the top layer. The blue ones are on the bottom layer. So I was able to get that overlapping. And I just followed this guide right here just mapped it all onto a PCB and everything worked fine on the breadboard so I went ahead and exported this to a Gerber file let's see it's generate cam data so this ends up exporting all of this to a zip file so that it can be sent off to a manufacturer for printing now Right here are the Gerber files for this PCB. This doesn't really mean anything to us, but when you choose a manufacturer, there's a lot of PCB printing services out there. This is OSH Park. Um, they're the ones that Trequino originally suggested using, and they already put a board out here to use it. We can click on that and see the board for Traquino, but I have mine uploaded here. Very simple. They do have a minimum order of three, but it ends up only costing $25.30. So very affordable, very easy to use. I do have two extra, um, two extra PCBs if anyone's interested. I will be posting the design files um, on my Patreon page. So if you want to sign up for that and support Thinking of Pi, make sure you check that out and you can get access to my design files. That's all I've got for today. Next week I will be covering how this system works. I don't want this video to get too long and there's a lot of stuff with how the tracking system works and I think that really deserves its own video. So until next time, make sure you hit the subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and let me know what you thought below. I will talk to you all next week. Thanks.